one word of caution is not to put your face too close to the pot because if there's any air pockets in the fries from when you're rolling them, they can pop and oil will splash out. Oh my God. Like that. Oh my God. Are you okay? I'm fine. Yeah. It didn't get on my face. Oh wow, it's all over me. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Hi, I'm Anita from Anita's Yogurt. We're gonna be making my favorite yuca fries and also a yuca sudada, which is a stewed yuca in a tomato-based sauce. You may have seen yuca in your local grocery store. It is a tuber, it grows in the ground like potatoes and carrots, and it has a much tougher skin than a potato. So I'm gonna show you how to peel it. The first thing I do is I start by chopping off the bottom and the top of the yuca. And when you're going to the grocery store to select yuca to buy, one trick you can use to make sure that it's fresh is you kind of pop off the bottom and you wanna make sure that it's completely white inside. If you see any discoloration, any black spots, it's not that fresh. You also wanna look for skin that's intact and it's all one homogeneous brown color too. I start by peeling off one strip and then I go from the top and you just wanna get the knife under the flesh and you can start prying it off and you're just gonna go around. I don't traditionally use a regular peeler to do this because the skin is so tough. I think it actually would be more difficult with the peeler and I don't wanna end up peeling off my hand. And then once I have one done, I'm gonna chuck it in the water bath here and grab another one, do the same thing. All right, now that the yuca is all peeled and we have the nice white flesh, I'm gonna show you how to cut it into chunks. If you do this with the knife, it's naturally gonna follow the, the middle of the yuca. And once you open it up, you're gonna see that there's a fibrous vein running down the middle of the root, that is not edible. It's gonna be very tough and stringy. So we're gonna do the same thing and quarter it. And now we're just gonna peel out that fibrous piece from the middle. And those can go in there. So we have our prepared yuca here cut into these little sections. I'm gonna drain off the water and they'll be nice and clean and ready to boil. Just gonna add a little salt to the water. We wanna boil them until they're tender all the way through. The best way to test them is with a butter knife. So you want a knife that's not too sharp because if it's super sharp, it's gonna go right through them when they're not quite ready. While the yuca is boiling, we're gonna prepare the sauce for the sudada. The yuca will mostly cook in the boiling water. We'll make the sauce and it'll kind of get extra soft and infuse itself in the sauce. So we're gonna use scallions. This particular dish actually goes by several different names in Colombia. Yuca sudada is just one name, but there's several different styles several different ways you can prepare it. It is yuca stewed in a sauce. So one pepper. It's usually a side dish to like a plate of meat with rice and beans and plantains. We want three tomatoes. Now let's get our butter knife. Check these. It's kind of falling apart a little and you want it to be very easy to pierce through, yep. And it smells very buttery. It actually smells really good. It has like a natural buttery aroma. And now we're gonna take these out and drain them. Now we have our yuca boiled and ready to go in the two different recipes and we're gonna make the sauce for the sudada. So we're gonna start the olive oil and then we're gonna get the garlic, scallions, we're gonna add the pepper, season it. Just gonna let that soften and then get the tomatoes in there. So now that this is nice and softened, I'm gonna add the tomatoes. All right, so we're just gonna get this simmering. All right, so as you can see, the tomatoes are, are cooking down. It's kind of melting down. At this point, I think I'm gonna add the tomato paste. I love this smell. This smells like home to me. 
We're gonna add the yuca, cover it with the broth. And now I'm gonna cover that. I'm gonna turn it down to low. We're gonna let this simmer and basically infuse the yuca with the beautiful flavor of this sauce. It's time for my favorite part. We're going to make the yuca fries. So we have our second half of the yuca here and we're gonna transfer it to a mixing bowl. I have to be honest, this particular recipe was not inspired by my family or my grandma. It was actually inspired by the yuca fries of the hot food bar at my local Whole Foods, which definitely are coming like frozen and like flash fried in a deep fryer. So the first thing you're gonna do is just mash the yuca until you have a puree. The nice thing about doing this step is, especially if it's your first time cooking yuca, if you left any of those little fibrous pieces, you're gonna notice them here and you can pull them out. I'm gonna season it with some salt. We're gonna add my favorite ingredient, coconut milk. This is gonna help give it a little bit of sweetness and also just kind of help the dough come together. And at this point, it's pretty much ready to go. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. At this point, you could work with it, but if it feels a little sticky, we're gonna separate it into our three sections. Just chill it for a few minutes to make it a little easier to work with. And if it's at all sticky or fussy to work with, you can wet your hands to make it easier. The idea here is that we wanna roll it into a snake, kind of as if you were gonna make gnocchis. So you wanna roll it to pieces that are about three quarters of an inch thick. And then we're just gonna cut it into four inch sections and those are gonna be our fries. The reason I like to do them this way, making it into a dough is rather than just frying the yuca straight away, it retains a lot more of the moisture, especially because you added the coconut milk and we can sneak in a little more sweetness with that coconut milk. And it's just easier to control the size and the shape. But the best part really is that you end up with this crispy coating, almost as if you had dipped them in batter before you fried them. While we're waiting for the oil to heat up, we're gonna make the sauce for the yuca fries. It is such a perfect combination. You want equal portions, mayonnaise and ketchup. Our oil is at 400 degrees. We're gonna start dropping the fries in one at a time, taking care not to overcrowd the oil. So at this point while they're frying, we know the yuca is already cooked through. We're basically trying to get a nice crispy golden exterior layer. So we're just waiting to hit that nice golden color and then you can take them out. But look at this beautiful result we have now. They're light, they're crispy on the outside, they're gonna be nice and tender on the inside. And we also have our yuca sudada ready to go right here. We're gonna get everything plated up. It's crazy to think how we started out with those big, novelly, kind of intimidating roots of yuca and ended up with this. We're gonna give this a try first, the yuca sudada. This would just go so well with any kind of main dish. The nice thing about this dish is the sauce really gets like infused into the yuca and it's nice and soft and buttery and almost just kind of melts into the sauce. Now we're gonna try my favorite, the yuca fries. They come out nice and crispy. Let me see if I can give you a nice crunch here. Mm. You can see they end up nice and fluffy and light inside and with this nice golden crispy outside. And this sauce is just the perfect way to eat these. That one was almost like too crunchy. <laughs> Again, I'm Anita from Anita's Yogurt. You can find my product on anitas.com or in stores across the country.